Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to talk about the second translation theorem or the second shifting theorem for Laplace transforms and we'll also talk about the unit step function to get started off. So the unit step function by definition is a function that steps up to one at some value or some real number a. So we'll just call it some real number a greater than or equal to zero. At that point, our unit step function will go from being zero to being one once we reach t equals a. So for example, the unit step function u of t minus 5 would be 0 until we get to t equals 5, and then it jumps up to being 1. All right, so that would be what this unit step function does. So this unit step function is pretty easy. If we look at another unit step function, like the function t times u of t minus 5, well, this function now is 0 until we get to 5, and then it jumps up to the function that would be t equals y equals t. So y equals t normally we would have it extending all the way down to the origin, but it's not really there until we get to t equals 5. And then this unit step function acts like a turn on button or a turn on switch. So the unit step function turns on this function y equals t at time t equals 5. So that would be something like y equals t for t greater than or equal to 5. So if you write that out as a piecewise function, you would write this out as a piecewise function that would be 0 for 0 less than or equal to t less than 5, and then it would be equal to t for t greater than 5. So you can always do this thing where you go back and forth between unit step functions and these piecewise functions. All right, and one more example here. We got t minus 5, u of t minus 5. Well, that would be a shifted y equals t minus 5, so that's shifted to the five units. So normally that function would be going down here, hitting the y-axis at negative five, but uh, we have it shifted. And then this u of t says, okay, I don't worry about anything that's down here. I just stay zero until I get to time t equals five. And then I, that function turns on, and then it's, it's like it starts at the t-axis at time t equals five. Then it starts going up just like this. So this function is a very interesting function because it acts almost like it's zero, and then it starts going up like a function y equals t, but actually it's t minus 5 because it shifted to the right 5 units. So this is the type of function we'll look at in the second translation theorem. Let's look at the second translation theorem, second shifting theorem. Part 1. So the second shifting theorem says that the Laplace transform of a function f of t minus a times unit step function of t minus a is equal to f of s, which is just going to be the Laplace transform of f without the t minus a, times e to the negative a s. So that's the second shifting theorem or the second translation theorem in its first form. And this form is more useful when you're taking inverse Laplace transforms. So we'll see an example down here, but this is more useful when you're going from S back to T, so inverse transforms. For example, if you wanted to take the Laplace transform of something like 2 over S cubed, e to the negative 4S, well, we identify some pieces here. This is going to be the F of S from our translation theorem and the e to the negative 4s, well, that's a equals 4, right? So this is our f of s, 2 over s cubed. 2 over s cubed would normally go back to t squared if we took the Laplace inverse of t over s cubed. That would normally go back to t squared. However, we don't just go back to our function f of t. We go back to f of t minus a. So our function t squared is going to go back to t minus 4 squared, and that e to the negative 4s part is what goes back to the unit step function. So e to the negative 4s is going to go back to u of t minus 4. So this e to the negative 4s goes back to this u of t minus 4, more or less. And then this, this piece here goes back to, well, normally it would be t squared, but we replace it with t minus 4 squared because we use this translation theorem in reverse. So the second shifting theorem alternate form is, says that the Laplace transform of a function g of t, u of t minus a, would be equal to e to the negative as. That stays the same. But then you take the Laplace transform of g of t plus a. 
So this shifts your function, and then you take the Laplace transform. So this is a T shift happening to this function g of t. So if it's not written as t minus a already, then you go to g of t plus a, take the Laplace transform, and that'll give us our Laplace transform. So this is more useful when computing the Laplace transform directly, going from t to s. So this is normal Laplace transform computation. For example, let's say we want to take the Laplace transform of something like t squared u of t minus 1. So we identify g of t here. g of t is t squared. All right, so this is not t minus 1 squared, so I can't use the second translation theorem that we just looked at. We have to use this alternate form. So if I look at g of t equals t squared, then g of t plus 1 would be equal to t plus 1 squared. So now we can say, okay, I can use the second shifting theorem by saying a equals, a equals 1, so that's going to give me e to the negative 1, s, Laplace of g of t plus 1. So that's Laplace of t plus 1 squared. Now we can FOIL that out, t squared plus 2, interesting, t squared plus 2t plus 1. Now taking the Laplace transform of each piece, this would go to 2 over s cubed, this 2 stays here, and then it would be 1 over s squared, so 2 over s squared for that middle term, and then 1 over s for that very last term. So this is the Laplace transform of this function t squared u of t minus 1. And that's how we use the second shifting theorem to take Laplace transforms. So if we look back, we say, okay, this one that we're looking at right now is more useful for taking transforms from t to s. The other one was more useful for taking inverse transforms from s to t. So this second translation there in both parts, both are going to be extremely useful for solving differential equations. Being very comfortable with both ways, both directions, is going to be very important because a lot of times our forcing function on the right-hand side of a differential equation may be some kind of piecewise function. And what we're going to do whenever we have a piecewise function is use the shifting theorem to take the Laplace transform and then take the inverse Laplace transform when we get the solution after. So that's how we do it.